Hello and welcome back Buckpole viewers. Uh, this is the third and final installment in our Paracord uh, Call Lanyard series that I've been doing. Um, I'm taking the extra material that I have left over from the neck band and I'm using that for the drops for this particular lanyard. And what you're going to do is you're going to do that S shape back and forth. Um, just like you did when you made the bottom drops on your original paracord. Um, and then I take it and I pinch it right about there. And I take this piece right here and I loop it behind. And then I go around. And I usually go two to three times around. And then what you want to do is you want to take this little piece and you want to catch it through um, this hole right here that you left on the back side. Um, you left a little hole right here. It's kind of hard to see, I know, with my fat fingers in the way. But then you want to pull that little loop on the back side tight. And when you pull it tight, you end up with a knot that looks like this this piece comes through this little loop right here that you had on the back side and when you pull this it cinches this down nice and tight and you don't want this to tuck into here like you normally would so or you don't ever want that to tuck in there if it tucks in there you've got it too loose and there's a chance that you could drop a call out of it and that's the last thing you want to do is lose some of your calls um, so there's your loop that you would use what I do is I measure out um, about a hand width for me um, so about 10 ish inches roughly and then I get the other side and I make the same I make the same S shape curve um, the same S shape that I did with that side and then I'll bring it down here I'll wrap it around and then make sure you get it super tight. Um, I'm naturally good at wrapping with my left hand and holding with my right hand for this particular part. I don't know why, that's just the way it's been since I started making these. Um, but then pull this through. Uh, by the way, to make these you're going to need about a minimum of two feet worth of paracord. So just uh, adjust for your planning. Once you get that pulled through, um, I try to make sure it's cinched down nice and tight again and you're gonna have another loop on this end that's gonna look just like this um, just kinda like your first one uh, you're gonna have a knot and it's gonna have that little notch in it right where you pull your rope tight and then what you're gonna do is grab your lighter and these ends you can either just kind of melt and let them sit or you can fold them over. Um, I prefer to leave the little ball on it and let it sit just because it seems to have a harder time to back out if you just kind of let it turn into a big ball of molten goo and let it sit. So I let it do that and it doesn't ever seem to really back out. Um, you can also take it and you can flatten these just like you do the other ones if you choose to flatten it. Um, and you can get it on to, let's see, like right there. And if you get it onto there, it sticks really nice and tight. But from here, you have your drop. Um, I try to make both of my loops about the same size when I go to put it on so that I've got the center pretty close for purposes of centering it on my lanyard and then let me bring the lanyard back over what you do is you take it you can do it one of two ways you can either put uh, like your uh, knitting needle through the line or you can go around your original braid um, for this I'll just go through the original braid uh, most of the ones I do I tie it through the um, original or through the original one just because I want it to have that ability to lock in a little better 
Um, and one of the things you can do is you'll notice you can adjust the length. Uh, I'm going to make another set for the opposite side and then I'm going to make two sets out of the dark brown. Uh, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what it looks like at the end and we'll go from there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this one helps you as well and thank you for tuning in and I'll show you what I have at the end and do a little more commentary right at the end. Okay guys and gals, this is the last of our lanyard build. Um, there is the neck band that we did. That's the double cobra. Our base lanyard down through here and our two drops that originally came off. In addition to those two drops, we added in another two, four, six, eight drops. So we have ten drops total on this um, one right here. Uh, like I said, I don't have any keychains for a whistle. But if you want to do a whistle, all you have to do is take the knot that you use for the drops and basically loop this around right in here or right onto your lanyard cord and then also do the same thing but tie in um, a keychain on the other end and that little keychain loop or you can use lobster claws as well um, either one of those will work uh, for the other end to connect your whistle so if you want a whistle set up in it all you have to do is just add one right to your loop and from there you've got it good to go so I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you find it practical and useful. Um, everything from a simple deer call with two drops all the way to a fully decked out um, camo and tan either waterfall or predator lanyard. So uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we appreciate it. And pay attention because we're probably going to be doing a, free, a Friday freebie. Uh, including this and it'll probably just be something as simple as sharing the post on our Facebook page so if you're there and you've seen it you'll know and if not well I'm sorry if you made it and you're too late so thanks for following and just remember to have fun with family and friends in the outdoors